Hey YouTube, I'm back. Lena I have a jam right here. It's so good to be with you. We're in another episode of Dear Lena where I ask questions about faith, life, culture, and everything in between. I am here to give hope for the Christian and a post-Christian world. We do it by giving you biblical truth for everyday life. And so every week you ask me a question, Dear Lena, and you hit me with something. And if you want to ask me a question, shoot me an email, dearlena at livingwithpower.org. You can see the address right there. And if you um, uh, like this, uh, Share it with your friends. Why not? Uh, leave us a comment and subscribe. Hey, today's question, uh, uh, let's just hit it right out of the gates here. Dear Lena, how do I live out my calling in social isolation? 2020 has been a crazy year, and one of the uh, elements of 2020 is that we're in social isolation. Not as bad now as it was back in March. Remember when we first started with the COVID? It was horrible. But one question is, how do we live out our calling now? Maybe you were called to do something that is no longer in existence, and it's discouraging, and many of us have built our life around something, and we're like, now I can't do it anymore. Well, what do you do? Well, three principles. I want to encourage you with that. Number one, living out your calling is less about your location and all about your heart. Okay, this is critical. Your calling isn't about where I am and when I am. In fact, many biblical examples do that. You look at someone like the Apostle Paul. Uh, he was called to preach the gospel and he spent most of his time in jail. You go, how did he fulfill his calling? Well, it was all about his heart, not about the job, but about his attitude and his heart and his relationship with God. Romans 12, one and two is a great scriptural passage for this. And Paul writes this, uh, I appeal to you brothers, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. What Paul's saying here is uh, offer your heart to God. That's your spiritual worship. When you offer your heart to God, everything else falls into place. What God wants is for us to say, yes, yes, Lord. Isaiah exemplified that so well in Isaiah chapter six, when he had a vision of God and God said, who am I gonna send? He said, send me. There's this availability, this willingness, and um, and this uh, heart that said, God, I'm in, no matter what it is you ask me to do, no matter where it is that you ask me to do it. So less about our location, more about our heart. In order to live out our calling that way, we've got to be yielded in our heart. To be yielded just means to say yes. Yes, God, whatever you have, I'm in. That's what it means to be yielded. It's surrender is a fancy Christian word for it. But it just means saying yes to God, even when you feel like saying no. All right? In order to live out your calling, you've got to know your purpose, by the way. Um, you go, man, you just said you don't have to. You just got to give the heart. Well, here it is. Your purpose isn't what you do. Your purpose is who you are. Your purpose is what Paul describes in, I think, 1 Corinthians. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Your purpose is to glorify God. Your purpose is to live your life in such a way so that people look at you and go, Man, wow, there is something different here. Uh, there's someone she's living for, something she's living for that is bigger than what we see here. Do you see it? And so what is your purpose? How will that play out in your life? Now, does God have specific acts for us to do? Yeah, he does. Um, let me just bring to your memory a couple of verses. You might be familiar with Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. Then he says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God had a plan for every Christian. When we give our life to Jesus, we, he has a plan for us. Now, ours is to stay in tune to him. Ours is to understand that there is something he's called us to. What is it? He'll make it known. When he needs you to do something, he'll let you know. Much like I watch my sister with her kids in the house. When she needs them to do something like empty the dishwasher, she says, hey, can you empty the dishwasher right now? When she needs them to take the trash out, can you take the trash out? When she needs them to study, so she tells them, can you please study? A heart that's willing says, whatever it is that you ask, I'm willing to do it. But there's a purpose. There's a purpose that God says he gave us even before time began. So in order to live out your calling, yield your heart, know your purpose, and maintain your focus. In an age like COVID uh, era, in an age where we are in social isolation, listen, it is all about your focus. And the only way to focus on God is through his word. That is why daily and multiple times a day, we have to take time out and say, okay, God, let me just reset here. There's something going on. I need to kind of get back to the same page as you, all right? So number one, not location, but heart. Number two, living out your calling is less about other people and more about your God. I didn't say it's not about people. I said it's less about people, more about God. What that means is it is your vertical relationship with God that influences your horizontal impact on others. God's word 
influences people word if I if there is such a thing so unless a call this is this is actually very freeing okay how freeing well unless God calls you to it don't waste your time on it, it really I mean so many of us are busy ourselves with a million things that God has not called us to what God wants us to be in tune with him and he will call us to people therefore we shouldn't fear them we shouldn't you know have this idea of well what will happen if they don't like me if they don't accept me you tune into God by the way you're not the first prophet or or Christian who's ever felt that way let me take you back to Jeremiah chapter one love this passage of scripture if you've never heard it before you're in for a treat it says now the word of the Lord came to me saying before I formed you in the womb I knew you and before you were born I consecrated you I appointed you a prophet to the nations Jeremiah saying God knew him before he was even conceived and had a plan for his life this isn't just about Jeremiah it's about you and me God saw us and formed us and so Jeremiah's freaking out about the job he says ah oh, Lord God behold I don't know how to speak I'm only a youth and the Lord said to him, don't say I'm only a youth for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Listen to me. When God wants you to do something, he'll send you to them. People are to be loved, but your mission and your calling is centered and rooted in your relationship with God. Unless God equip, equips you for it, don't use up the energy for it. He'll show you what he, what he equips you for and what he calls you for. And unless God he leads you to them, don't put yourself on them. So many of us are pushing ourselves on others. We do this on social media. We're constantly hitting people with, man, let God lead you to it. How does he do it? The same way he did it for Philip in the New Testament. He will actually call you out and say, hey, I want you to go. There's an Ethiopian down on the road reading scripture. Why don't you go and, and meet with him? And the guy gets saved and gets baptized out day God is able to do things that practically you just tune into him keep your focus on him it's about your heart it's about God not about and less about other people it's not that it's not about other people it's just about less about other people all right thirdly and I'm done living out your calling is less about planning and more about responding again don't be fooled I'm not saying there's no planning but it's less about planning more about responding. Responding is saying yes to God, to whatever it is that he has. Isaiah 6, I mentioned it earlier. I'll take you to it. Again, uh, it, the Lord, it, Isaiah has a vision from the Lord, and it's a time when there's a lot of stress. The king has died, Uzziah, and everybody's freaking out, and the whole world is in an uproar. And then Isaiah has this vision of God, and then he says, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. That is a response that is uh, a yes to God. Uh, it's less about planning, more about God, whatever it is you want me to do, wherever it is you want me to go, I'm in. So while you can plan some things, it's your availability that positions you to action. And while you must plan some things, it's your willingness that propels you to move. And while you must plan some things, you must pray for everything. Man, all of this calling stuff is undergirded by prayer. So let's re review. Uh, your calling and living it out in social isolation, this, we're not, we don't care if you're in social isolation or not. God has a plan. It's not about your location because it's always been about your heart. It's less about other people and it's always been about God. God speaks, God leads, God directs, God equips, God calls, God has a plan, God purposes in your life and he'll bring you to them or bring them to you. That is what he does. He is not threatened by social isolation. His work goes on. Ours is to respond. It's not to plan as much as to respond, to be open, alert, intentional when you go out to the grocery store when you open the door to be, there's relationships that come your way there are people online even you don't hit everybody in the truth with the truth but there are some people that you reach with the truth online why because God has called you to it and if he's called you to it he will make a way for you to do it all right that's what we got today I hope you're living out your calling I hope you know the truth that God has called you and purposed you for a life uh, that glorifies him he does have a purpose for your life you are not forgotten just because you're in social isolation does not mean that God is done with you your story is not over yet. I genuinely believe that and I remind myself of that every day. So if you've got a question, dear Lena at livingwithpower.org, send me the question. If you are looking for a Bible study, we've got a great online community. You can reach us by going to livingwithpower.org. Top of the page, there's a blue box that says join our community. It's a Facebook community. That is the easiest way for you to find us. Every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time, I teach a series there. It is awesome. It's fun. The lessons are available on YouTube. You can check out the channel, subscribe to the channel, share this with your friends, leave a comment, click the like button. Why don't you? But above all, have a blessed and awesome day. God loves you. He's for you. He hasn't forgotten you. And I'm going to leave you with that. All right. Peace. Take care.